as I was just talking about <laughs> all this powder being glitter and not something else, and I was like, I can get rid of it. Whenever I have an excessive glitter spill, I'm like, I'll salvage it. I'll find it. And sometimes I do. Sometimes I find a way to kind of get it onto a paper and then funnel it back into something. But you got to take the losses sometimes on the glitter spills. All right. So I don't know exactly what I'm doing here, but I do need to channel and process some energy. It's coming up. Happy Beltane and welcome to May. It's May 2nd. <clears throat> yeah. Still getting better on my shuffling. You know who's incredibly gifted at shuffling? <laughs> Every other person on YouTube? No. Uh, my cha channel's name is Sassy Scorpion Tarot or Tarot. The woman's name who does those readings is Christina. And you should, she's a great reader. And I like her videos very much. And if you want to watch her videos, I would encourage it. But just go watch her shuffle. If nothing else, just go watch her shuffle. What is happening astrologically this week? I believe we have a full moon and a lunar eclipse. <sighs> full moon and a lunar eclipse. Yes. All right. I said keep them. That's definitely going to be affecting us as well as the 5-5 portal. Um, what's super cool about this 5-5 portal is that 2000... And 23, or 23 rather, 2-3, two, 2-2-3 three, two, two, three as I look up. I'm sorry, there's a buzzing that's bothering me. And I've corrected it. Um, 2,023 numerologically reduces down to a single digit number 7, but 2-3 is obviously just 5. Um, and five, five, five is like the angel number for change, changes, shifts, positive shifts, breaking cycles. cards to come out are the ten of pentacles i'm sorry the ten of cups the king of pentacles and the two of swords in reverse and i don't read reversals except when i'm guided to which sounds a little bit controversial because then aren't i just picking when i want to and when i don't no sometimes i feel like i really you know didn't you know shuffle it properly or whatever and it was meant to come out upright and then sometimes like this time they came out you know like this so two of swords being when it's upright feeling trapped and you know as if she has the ability to take one of these swords and remove her blindfold and see clearly but it's a stalemate and a time of indecision and when we're reversing that energy I kind of think that it's the ending of a of a cycle of indecision, particularly with these cards, which are, you know, incredible stability and abundance, the king of pentacles being absolute material um, prowess, you know, the king of pentacles. And then the 10 of cups being that emotional fulfillment. So I see this as a, a very good, and also talking about the 555 portal, I think that this season, 
with the right mindset and intentions from this month until August, it can be the time for us to get out of any indecision, right? What's coming into my mind right now is stop procrastinating and make the moves that you need to make in order to get something going, even if just a little bit. Just put one foot in front of the other and let your positive momentum start to snowball for you in the way that you want to see yourself move. So it's up to you. Like you've got infinite directions, actually. If you get, you know, it's not just north, south, east, west. It's not just north, south, south, I'm sorry, northeast, northwest. There's infinite different little degrees of, of orientation that you could point your compass, essentially, right? If we want to really split hairs, you could get infinite with it. My point is, just make sure that your compass is pointing the right way. And by that, I mean align the desires of your heart with the baby steps that you start to take in May, because whether you intend it or not, those baby steps are gonna be the steps that lead to you know, the next thing. And there's potential to have that be incredibly emotionally fulfilling, but also abundant and, and profitable. <clears throat> like, right, so all of these came out reversed. They're just not reversed to me. <clears throat> Okay, I'm just going to show and read and put them down and then kind of interpret all together. Wheel of Fortune, one of my favorite cards in this deck. Uh, I have a painting that I've borrowed some imagery from this exact card, but it's not really ready to share or talk about yet. Ten of Wands, Seven of Wands, <clears throat> Three of Pentacles. Knight of Swords in the world. Okay, so what I'm getting off of this, uh, starting off with the Wheel of Fortune, I feel like if, if things have been, you know, in a stagnant time, that they're not going to feel that way much longer. But also, it's time in order to do what, what I was just talking about with positive forward movement, if only through baby steps. And again, with that, you don't have to know where those steps are leading. You just have to know that the orientation of your compass, which is your heart and your alignment, like your, your truth, you just have to get clear on what it is that you want and what you'd like to accomplish so that when you make those steps, you're oriented the right way. But you don't need to see what the what the outcome is going to be. In order to, you know, get going on that path, I think another thing that we're being asked to do is let go of our defensiveness and all of our burdens from the past, okay? It's not time to meet new people and tell them everything you've ever been through. That's not where we're, that's not what we're doing anymore. We're not speaking about our traumas. We're, I mean, unless you need to go find, you know, find help, find a therapist, process your emotions, et cetera, et cetera. I just mean, we get to a point in our lives where we, we sing the song of who we want to be and we tell the story of the life we want to live. And a big part of healing is knowing when it's time to let go. And our identities no longer, it's a dissonant note, Okay. Think of a harmony, and I've talked about this in other videos, your essence, your vibration, the things in your mind, the quality of your mind, those are all notes, frequencies, harmonies. There's a lot, there's not a lot. There are these like splinters <laughs> in our sides. They're like dissonant notes in our harmonies, and we need to kind of purify this tune. And it's funny I say splinters because these are, you know, wood sticks, these wands. But I also see it as like, listen to the frequency, listen to the music of the story that you tell the people around you. When you talk about who you are, when you introduce yourself, when you choose to partake in conversation with acquaintances, with strangers, with friends, with family, what are the things that you commonly talk about? What are the stories that you bring up to be like, you know, your, your funny get to know you story with a new group of people? Or what is it that you tell people when you want them to know, you know, who you really are? Some of these things aren't necessary for us going forward because they paint a picture of who we've been, 
that's more oriented around a victim mindset instead of the creator that you are. You are a creator with unlimited potential and you're about to experience that. How exciting. <laughs> In a new way. In a new way, as the world, uh, I'm sorry, as the wheel of fortune turns and cycles close out and new cycles begin, mother... I don't know why I said that. Mother Universe. Lady Universe. I say Lady Universe from time to time. I've named paintings that, but I'm not sure where Mother came from. Uh, our lives. Mother Nature? The Great Cosmic Mother, the Great Cosmic Womb, is rebirthing us at this time. I see it as like a half micro rebirth. So there are certain cycles that are huge, certain cycles that are really small, you know, like the moon. Do -do -do -do, it just keeps going and going. This is a, a, a micro rebirth of sorts, right? Seasonally. I mean, there's some pretty huge transits and shifts happening right now. But what I'm specifically talking about is like a, you can, you can handle it just pretty quickly. Process this and, and move this energy along and keep it going, right? It's not going to take years to assimilate to whatever's happening right now. But going back to this mother idea, the cosmic womb is rebirthing us to be able to experience new abundance and emotional fulfillment in tandem at the same time, okay? Sometimes I think in our lives we've had success emotionally, but then other things are not aligned or success materially, but maybe we're not quite as happy emotionally. And it's time to experience them in tandem. And again, another way to make sure that you clarify your intentions without getting overwhelmed right now is to decide with conviction whether or not you know it's the right decision the longer you stay in any type of energy where you're uncertain about things the less strong you are in your own communication to the universe about this is who i am this is what i want and i i put out my frequency i don't absorb you know the world and the influences from around me and let that dictate who i am in my last video i talked about feeling like a piece of kelp on the seafloor just going with these currents not because you know i'm I'm, I'm whipped or spineless. No, because you have to be able to be flexible to the things that are happening without being worried that, you know, your world is falling apart um, when big energies, <laughs> big energies, they're all big energies. When, when shifts happen and you don't necessarily feel like you did yesterday. Decisiveness is an incredibly a powerful tool. Decisiveness is an incredibly powerful tool. And it doesn't even matter if it's um, like you're at Baskin Robbins <laughs> and you're just trying to pick between two ice creams. You know, the, the, the more confidently you go forth and you just pick one, it's like a big old thumbs up on your, on your ability to just believe in yourself. That goes way further than we think. Okay, so... Also during this time, I believe that there's going to be a need for, um, actually, this is, this is actually, this is in support of what I was just saying. Decisiveness and forward motion, right? Wielding the sword to carve the elements from our path. So yes, baby steps, but also don't be afraid to go forward with confidence, even if you can't see the exact steps or outcome for what it is that you're trying to, you know, create or change in your life. It's okay to still do it with passion because it is that motivation, motivational, momentous, momentum energy that's going to, you know, help us get into an abundant, an abundant summer, really. And I also see it as a time of being able to collaborate with people. So in a material way, as we're building to a lot of material stability this could be in the home it could be in your in your health creative ideas projects and ventures <laughs> excuse me perhaps a new um job path whatever it might be it's a good time to do this with the support of friends or you could be communing with your spirit guides you know this card i see the top of it looking something like a statue carved into a building but i also take it as you know, people who do channel energy and see things in a clairvoyant fashion. It's kind of like this middle character is is channeling a higher power or a higher being 
who is informing creative inspiration and divinely guided ideas, right? And this guy's like, what do you got there, bud? And they're sharing and they're talking and they're creating together. I'm going to do top of the deck and bottom of the deck. Judgment. Huzzah. The trumpets. <laughs> The trumpets are being like sounded on things in, in people's lives right now. And I see that happening at like a grand scale, a collective scale, but also um, it will manifest differently on the, on the personal scale. Have faith that the things that fall away need to fall away and have faith that everything that leaves your life, right? Our attachment as humans with the egos that we have prevent us from being able to fully let go of things that we're grieving and, and um, things that are leaving our lives. Because somehow we don't give ourselves the possibility of imagining that something better could come in to replace it. This also goes for energy healing with the body. When you remove a block, when you remove an energetic block from the body, you can't just take it out. You have to replace it with light. You have to fill that space with light energy, with pure, positive, white light healing energy. <laughs> yeah, I think that a lot of the things that, you know, judgments being called on in people's lives, there's even happier, better things on the other side of that. I can relate to that. There are certain things that I cling to and I'm like, I don't want to be done with this. It's functioning for me, right? There's something something within, even the things that aren't good for us. It could be a person or a habit or a place. Maybe you'd like to go to this really bad park bench and it's not good for you. I'm just using a silly example, but, you know, what if there was this super magical gazebo available to you and instead of going to that park bench that had you know dog poop that people weren't picking up and some really aggressive squirrels that always kind of came over and bothered you this gazebo was you know around more trees and more flowers you get my point we, we will never know what's on the other side unless we're bold enough to let go of the things that no longer serve us and that is a hard thing to do it really requires a level of faith and Trusting both ourselves and the universe, but also knowing that the message was received, right? Because if you've ever had any positive intention about the things you want in your life, don't stress about the fact that you need to kind of like reaffirm that and be like, I got to sit down and manifest more and do my gratitude lists. And that's where I think toxic spirituality comes in or like that, you know, the, the stuff that the quote unquote new age cult gets a bad rap for because... Then you're not aligned like any anybody who does practice this in an authentic heart led aligned way knows that that if you're ever feeling like it's a responsibility for you to partake in manifesting your dream life or or like it's uh, a burden right again we're releasing that we're not telling the story of carrying these things that don't serve us you know then then you're doing it wrong it should light you up to cultivate a sense of knowing what it is that you're working towards and trying to manifest it should give you passion that feels like something that you can put into words it should you should be able to take this feeling and describe it with words that are almost tactile right if you know what synesthesia is so if I'm talking to anybody about my aura my power my ability to spread my energy outside of my body and have it create things and go into the future and clear the clear the energy in a space before I get there so that when I get there I don't feel awkward or uncomfortable or incapable of being myself around other folks um for me it's a sensation and a feeling and these it's a color schism <laughs> that I've that I've had since childhood hot 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 pink fluorescent bright pink but then there's this iridescent, you know, rainbow. There, it, it's fire flames, but it's very, very, very light. And that's kind of, you know, the God filaments, these, these energetic particles. That's, that's how I see my own energy. That's not all energy. That's not all energy I work with. That's not the way the healing energy from, you know, the divine that we can help to cast over people, whatever it may be. Clear people, clear places, clear things. 
different kinds of energy and light work, but I digress. It's not necessary for you to reiterate what it is that you want and what it is that you're trying to accomplish. It's not necessary. Even if you've never done any type of manifestation work in the formal way of writing down dreams and desires, that, that always helps, of course, unless you feel like it's a burden. That will always help. But the way that you can think back through your own mind, through your whole life, everything you've ever, you know, wanted or aspired to be your deepest, you know, secrets or wishes. The universe has seen all of that and more, right? Because they see your Akashic self too. And there are beings who are helping you, watching over you and guiding you that know you better than you know yourself, such that when we come into contact with certain things in our lives, we may not always recognize them for the blessings that they are. So be open-minded is another message. Be open-minded. Be open-minded to how things change in this season. You never know what type of, um, with judgment, right, what type of slingshot effect might happen. Again, eclipses, um, these radical, like, ex ex expansions and shifts of energy. And I am not an astrologer, so sometimes I just, I always speak very metaphorically. Not sometimes, always. Um, forgive me if that's not how you should talk about a, an eclipse, but I'm also just talking about how it feels when I think about it. I'm going to take one card from the Starseed Oracle by Re Rebecca Campbell. And I guess this is a reading for, you know, now until whenever this little cycle completes. In the same way that energetic cycles can be more macro or more micro, I believe that anybody who might listen to this, you know, could experience these things within a single week or, you know, like I said, from May until August or both. Maybe this starts to happen where you're like, mm, I'm, I'm having this chance to kind of drop my burdens of the past and make my two, 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 two when I looked up, make myself anew, you know, build myself up, not for the person that I've been. And I'm not saying you can't celebrate, you know, all the things that you've been through that have made you who you are. But in terms of what you choose to um, share, it is not it is not the things that we've been through that make us who we are. It is that we overcame it and how we overcame it. And how we can embody that energy of knowing that we're strong and capable of moving through challenges, embodying that energy and radiating that, that's that's right, empress, emperor. They have fought battles, but they don't talk about them, not because they're not healed, right? It's, it's, it's the culmination. Hathors. Well, this is as it should be. We the Hathors, if you're not familiar with Hathor, the Hathor energy, I would give that a good Google. Uh, highly, ascended uh it'll it'll talk about it masters beings but look it says deep love mother's milk birth as a portal i said mother i said birth and i'm gonna hold this back up because this is very uh i'm gonna put it here so that you can see it but you can't if i do that i'll just hold it up Birth is a portal that ushers in new life. The Hathors are here to remind you that you're a child of the Cosmic Mother and you're being called to be held by her deep, never-ending love and embrace. This is a tender, nourishing card reminding you to receive the deep, deep love of the Mother's embrace. The Hathors know that the journey on Earth can be rocky and lonely at times, but you're being reminded to rest more deeply in the Mother's arms. This is a card of extreme potency, of femininity, of creation, of birth. You're being called to mother yourself and others too, to surrender to your sacred femininity, to create and surrender to your own creations, to hold and be held. You're being called to remember your place in the web of life 
and to realize that the cosmic mother is watching you every step of the way. That's what I said. The cosmic mother knows your mind and your soul better than you know your own mind and soul. So there's no need to prove. There's no need to worry. There's no need to fear like you go your life without being known because you're seen. You may be going through a transition right now, moving from one way of being to another. If so, you're being reminded that you're cradled in a sacred container, that you're more held than you can possibly imagine, and you have access to more love than your heart can bear. If you're struggling in any way, you're being reassured that things will work out. Open yourself to receiving the overflowing love of the Cosmic Mother flooding towards you from every direction. Let it stretch your heart. All right, repeat after me if you would like to. I allow the deep love of the Cosmic Mother to wash over me. I am loved. I am held. Mm. Yeah. I mean, that's a nice, that's a nice message. It's a really beautiful message. It's a really beautiful message and it also brings for me, it brings up for me, um, I'm getting like emotional, like sad actually, because I feel this deep sense of, yeah, I'm getting goosebumps all over my, the right side of my body, which is the masculine side. Okay, so the collective masculine energy is going through a huge overhaul right now. And I'm feeling this sense of betrayal, okay? So I think that a lot of people collectively in society, right, the mother being held, it's important to know that we're held by something greater than us because people might be realizing now that the things and the structures and the paradigms and the systems that we have put our you know trust in or believed in, they are not what they have said that they were or that they would do or that they would be. And I think that that's a co collective manifestation of like the patriarchal um, way of thinking that specifically, I'm an American, specifically in America, there's been a lot of like corruption, right? And just, I mean, in the, in the world too, there's a, there's a pretty patriarchal thing going on compared to any type of, you know, lost, beautiful matriarchal society that we might read or dream of. But the sadness is, what I'm feeling, the sadness, it's that idea that you haven't seen the gazebo yet. You don't want to leave the park bench because you haven't seen how beautiful the gazebo is. And I'm not just saying that pertains to men or the masculine collective, because all of us, all people have both energies. They're just energies that create synthesis and harmony and union, and they can be in balance and out of balance. And different ways. And I think that as a collective and as a society, we're learning to balance our feminine and masculine energies a little bit more. And people, you know, we hear it said like, or how do I put this? There's a, f no, a fear almost right by um, men who, who could be considered more, you know, the, the thick skulled fear-based ego-based camp of like, I don't want to be a feminist because the, the women think they're, they're too, they're going to overpower and, and take over. It's like, no, <laughs> they just want to be equal, right? There's a difference between equality and equity. Equity I actually don't remember what the difference is, but the idea is that if you give a very, a very short person and a very tall person the same little crate to stand on, this person's not going to be able to see. If you give this person a much bigger pedestal to stand on and the tall person a little crate, now they can see. Now they can see over the wall and they get to see the same thing. Uh, I believe that is what is happening, but there's been this fear right this crumbling and there's nothing to that it's just natural again wheel of fortune judgment <laughs> it's super confusing so many people are reading like i haven't been on 
YouTube. I didn't think I'd be as, maybe I'm going to do a lot of card readings. Who knows? I, I would imagine that this is going to start, I'm going to be like going through my days, like I need to channel energy out and do card readings. And that's super cool. That's not what I thought this would be. I thought I'd be talking a lot more about my artwork and channeled works from Archangel Metatron and fractals and light language. And I'm sure I'm going to be doing a lot of that as well. But I think that there's so much to talk about with what's changing in the energies and infinite lenses through which it can be interpreted. There's just so many people doing this type of work and it's, um, it's good. Because again, like, we resonate with different people's voices and lenses and work. And that's beautiful. And now I want to do, <laughs> not quite done, I'd like to do just an, an angel answer oracle, okay? So prepare a question. What do you want a question to? I'm sorry, what do you want an answer to? If you'd like an answer to something, think of the question now. And like, I mean, these cards can provide insight and guidance. And I'm going to read the book for whatever answer comes up, but also interpret it a little bit through whatever uh, I receive. But it's best to have it be, you know, more or less a yes, no question or something that you can interpret a yes or no answer to fit your question. If that makes sense. All right. What is the answer to the question? For anybody watching this video, what's the most useful thing for my viewer to hear right now? to help them through this time of transition regarding whatever topic of inquiry is on their mind and on their heart. Please show me with clarity what the answer is that they need to hear most in order to move forward with confidence and confirmation. One, two, three. <laughs> Listen to your intuition. Now that may be unsatisfactory for some, so I am gonna draw another one, but I'm gonna leave it up. Listen to your intuition. <clears throat> the secondary answer is forgiveness. Forgiveness. Maybe we need to forgive somebody else. Maybe you need to forgive yourself. I'm overwhelmingly getting a uh, forgiving of self energy. But I'm going to read them both. And then I'm going to conclude this. Your intuition is completely reliable and accurate at this time. Listen to your own inner guidance and you can't go wrong. You can be certain that the messages you're receiving from your angels are real and trustworthy. Have faith in your feelings about your circumstances and the feelings you're experiencing. Your insights into other people and their true feelings or motives are perfectly accurate. There is no need to question what you know is true. Now, I am getting a cautionary message around the notion of projection and insecurity when we don't clear ourselves as empaths and sensitive people and retain the influence of other people's energy whom we've been around or interacting with then that is when your intuition can become clouded, right? The oracle becomes foggy when it's not clear. Chakras will become blocked when you're not clearing them. Root chakra, by the way. <laughs> Grounding is important right now. So get a low vibrational stone, not low vibrational as in bad, but a grounding stone, like black tourmaline or... Rubelite is what I heard. Um, green adventuring. Selenite for clearing. So grounding, root chakra, but, but I was talking about clearing. At, at multiple points throughout the day right now, it would be good just to remind yourself and the universe and actually physically see it, you know, remove ugh, like a net off of you. If you go into the grocery store, 
get back into the car and say, I now release any and all energy that does not belong to me to the universe for the universe to make it whole. It is not mine. I reclaim all my personal power and I only go forth with all of my whole and complete energies to use my own discernment and intuition with complete clarity. I trust myself. Thank you. I mean, you don't have to say that. You can say whatever it is that, that resonates with you. Forgiveness can work miracles. When you release the past, a weight is lifted from your shoulders and a sense of freedom washes over you. Ask your angels to help you let go of sadness or pain caused by others so that you can be free. This card also refers to a need for self-forgiveness. It's time to let go of any guilt you are holding regarding the past mistakes. Give yourself credit for having tried your best even if the results weren't what you would have liked. You always did your best when you know how to and if you don't think that's true, if you know you could have done better, it's time to be gracious with yourself and just let it go. No one's perfect and that's how you learn. Focus on the changes you've made since then that have made you a better person. So this also has to do with releasing the shackles of storylines that no longer serve us. So if it's hard for you, for example, like I was talking about earlier in the reading, when you, when you, when you notice these patterns of how you bring up certain stories or tell certain tales, right? Sing the song of your own identity. If it's hard for you to drop certain storylines, then maybe there is forgiveness that needs to happen before you're able to do that. I'm going to sound a chime. So if you're wearing headphones, or even if you're not, it's just going to be a high pitched sound to clear the energy and conclude the reading. Okay, I'm being, <laughs> I'm being guided to do a quick exercise for releasing things that no longer serve us. I really mean quick. I'm going to try to end the video at 40 minutes. I know no one's rushing me along, but it's funny how these things just keep going and going and going. But I suppose that's the, the beauty in it. Okay, so wherever you are now, if you're seated or standing, if you have the ability to close your eyes... If you're driving don't close your eyes if you're standing or walking around or folding laundry you can continue to do that if you want but just take a minute to feel the weight of all of the things you've been through like a like a shield of armor or like a turtle shell that you wear and we use it to protect ourselves sometimes we use these stories of past identities to give reason as to why we are the way that we are. Even when we are mature enough to, to know better, right? We are human and nobody is perfect. And we're all capable of being triggered for various reasons based on what we've been through in life. We all carry stories and baggage and burdens. And sometimes we think that we have fully released them when we haven't. And right now, you could be feeling light as a feather or as heavy as a pile of bricks. But if there's anything that's been weighing you down that you feel as a sense of this turtle shell or this, I'm seeing just a metal turtle shell on the back, but it's worn like a backpack. We don't want that. We're not going to take that into the next chapter. And so it's going to be kind of an odd guided meditation, but just bear with me, okay? So come conjure to your mind right now one, two, three, or however many things. It could just be the one solid idea or memory or experience or person that you want to forgive or release and go forward without letting this affect you. The thing that you know that is holding you back. And if you don't know what it is, then just intend to release whatever it is that is holding you back unnamed unwritten or unsaid whatever it may be and trust that the universe will help you release in this moment so as you feel it weighing you down do your best to correct your posture okay it's 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 heavy to carry a metal turtle shell but you're going to drop your shoulder blades down your back and you know tuck 
your tailbone in a little bit under your hips so that your spine is tall and you are proud and your heart chakra is open. Your shoulders are back. You're not doing something weird, you know, like push, pushing back, but we are a slump culture. We sit at desks, we use our phones, you know? It does take effort at this point for most people to sit with an erect, healthy posture that lets the spine breathe the way it should, okay? So take a minute to drop your shoulder blades, kind of align the vertebrae in your spine like little marshmallows, feel them being spongy, allow yourself to kind of sway back and forth and find a stasis that feels good for you. And feel the weight of this turtle shell of baggage made of metal, the iron turtle shell. And now bring attention to your ability to have carried that for so long, okay? It's also the, the Ten of uh, Wands card, it, almost uh, you know identically, although it's a satchel full of wands, but those are things from the past that he doesn't need to carry. I put the cards away or else I would show the card again. Bring your attention to your strength in this posture, this refound uprightness, and know that you'll be even more capable once you put that down. You'll be able to run faster, jump higher, feel better, and have an easier time of maintaining this upright posture. Take a deep breath. Okay, and now if you're sitting, if you're standing, bring your attention to the base of your spine at your root chakra and imagine a glowing red ruby garnet, deep red light. Feel the presence of rootedness here. Feel a sense of security and safety as you bring your attention to how the base of your spine is the support of this structure, which is your back <laughs> that you're holding upright. Feel it as the, and I'm getting very, you know, flushed actually, heating up a lot as I'm doing this and talking about it. So you may be too. Allow it to be warm and hot and activated and feel this red spinning, vibrant, vital energy. <clears throat> And now what's gonna happen is that the turtle shell in a moment with your intention is going to like get pulverized and squeezed and sucked through the fire of your root chakra and sent down into the core of the earth, the hot molten sun center of the earth. Okay, so as you breathe, and you connect to your root chakra, see your root chakra as a portal. And from the base of your spine, there is an absolute tunnel from the root chakra connecting your base, your earthness, your, your sense of self, your rootedness, your here-ness, you are here. From your root chakra, it is going all the way down into the center of the earth. And as you take some breaths, imagine that burden on your back, liquefying and just going all the way down through your root chakra and into the center of the earth. And it might take a few breaths for you to visualize that actually happening. Kind of feel the lightness of it, like there's almost a phantom limb syndrome where you feel the heaviness lingering, but it's gone. And you can test that it's gone by stretching and feeling into your unburdened body and self. I said it was going to be a little bit of a weird visualization because it's like liquefying a metal turtle shell that you've worn as a backpack and sending it down a straw or a tube like it's a smoothie you know, flushing it down into the center of the earth. We don't need it. So transmuting that energy away, right? And when it goes, we don't need to, we don't need to think about it anymore. When it goes, so do the labels, so do the names, the faces, the date stamps, those dates of, you know, loss or grief or whatever they were. Of course, you can always 
hang on to whatever it is that you want to remember and keep and retain. But the things that are holding you back, I can guarantee you that nobody in your life, even your loved ones that you've lost, wouldn't want you to hold on to things that are holding you back. So give yourself space to anchor yourself in the power that you can derive from grounding yourself and feeling the sense of security that comes from a healthy, clear root chakra. And release. Thank you for watching. Drink a lot of water, actually. It's a good time to drink a lot of water, especially when we're transmuting big energy like that.